In this video, I'm going to show you how you can allow your learners to save key entries from your e-learning course over to a special notepad that they can print out at the end of the course. So recently I've had a client who wanted a way to bookmark, if you will, I know it's a tricky word in Captivate, but essentially store some information from an e-learning course that the learner found valuable. And I came up with this idea of using a little clipboard that learners could click on, store the passage or entry from that particular page, and then recall it later and using local storage with JavaScript, actually recall it in an HTML document and print it out. Let me show you an example of what the finished product looks like. Okay, so here's an example of that particular type of bookmark or clipboard, whatever you wanna call it. And for example, on this slide, there's five different ways that you can improve your garden. And let's say three of those are really great ideas from your learner's perspective. So they can click on the first one and momentarily it changes into a checkbox clipboard. And you can press another item here and add this to your list of items that you're interested. If you click on something you've already clicked on before, it actually gives you a little bit of a warning to let you know that you've already added this to the list and it doesn't make a redundant entry for you. Once you've gone through the e-learning, of course, you can then press this jump to clipboard icon, which I've placed here on this slide here. And it's gonna take you to a page where an HTML window opens up and it allows you to either read the information here. Of course, this is a scrolling window if it needs to be, but the learner, of course, can print this page to either a PDF document or to a local printer. So it makes it a great way for learners to create their own list of notes or clipboard information, whatever you want to call it, basically allows them to bookmark some key items from the e-learning course that they can use again later. Now, in my design here, I've decided that 10 items is an appropriate amount. So throughout the course, they might uh, select 10 different items and save them to their clipboard. Um, in this case here, you're gonna need some variables to store that information within your Captivate course and later export it out to HTML using the local storage feature. So let's go ahead and click on project and then click on variables. And we'll go ahead and add all the variables that you need. So the first one you're going to need is something to store the current entry. For example, you know, in this first paragraph, we talk about plan, plan and design. So that might be something we're gonna store. So I like to start all my variables with an underscore, current underscore entry. And I'll go ahead and save that. Now I mentioned that I want to store up to 10 different uh, clipboard items or notepad items. So we'll go ahead and we'll add those items in as well. I'm gonna call my notepad 01, notepad 02, and so on. I also need um, a title and a description for the output that I sent to HTML. So we're gonna include that in our variable as well. So I'm gonna create a variable called shortlist underscore description. And I'm gonna paste in a value for this that is literally the text I'm gonna use on that HTML page. We'll go ahead and press save and I'll add new. And we'll also have shortlist underscore title. The, the naming convention has changed a little bit. It's been clipboard, it's been notepad, it's been shortlist, but whatever you end up calling it uh, is fine with me. And I'm gonna call this course notes. So your learner will know exactly what's in front of them. And we'll go ahead and press save. Okay, so we have all the variables. Just to recap, we've got the current entry. So whatever is literally right in front of you, 
all 10 of the storage locations that we're going to store the values of the previous current entries in and a description and a title for this output slide. So we can go ahead and close the variables window. Now, as you can see on this slide here, I only have one clipboard icon. Let me show you the different states that are available. And you can set up your own icon to look similar to this. I got these particular icons uh, directly from Google, but you can use anything that you wish. So if we go into the properties inspector and we click on state view, we can see the multi states that I've created. So I found three icons and a fourth one in this navigation item, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but I found uh, three main icons that represent uh, the states for this particular clipboard button. So the normal state just shows some text on the clipboard. The accepted state, and this is a custom user state, and of course you can add your own states just by clicking on the new state button at the top here. I called it accepted, and then I used the notepad.png icon over here in the properties inspector to import a new image uh, in this case, notepad accepted. And then there is another entry for duplicate entry. So if I've already added that particular passage of text to my clipboard or notepad, uh, it's gonna show this little warning symbol to let you know that it's already been populated in your list of 10 clipboard items. So that's gonna work fine for this situation. The next thing we need to do is we need to write an advanced action to go with this here. Ultimately, we're going to save that advanced action as a shared action, but you always need to start with the advanced action. So I'm gonna click on the project dropdown menu and select advanced actions. And we'll just give this action a name. I'm gonna call it add underscore to underscore notepad. Now, this is going to require um, a few tabs of advanced actions, not too many. The first tab, we're just gonna take care of assigning our variable that we called current entry before with the information that's on the screen here. So we'll go ahead and we'll select the assign action and we'll choose current entry. So this is the item that we're working with and we're gonna give it a literal value of something here. So this is the current entry. For now, you can put anything in here that you wish. Because these are words and spaces within the words, you'll notice that some um, quotation marks uh, end up around that. That's fine, no big deal there. The next thing we want to do is we need to validate that entry, find out if we've added it before. So we'll go to the untitled tab here and we'll, uh, we should actually give this a name here. So let's call this current entry and the second tab we'll call validate entry. Okay, so validate entry is a conditional advanced action. We're gonna run one of two different sets of actions depending on a set of circumstances. And that's the first part of a conditional advanced action. You gotta put that circumstance in place here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna compare all of our notepad variables to the current entry, starting with, of course, notepad01. Is it equal to the current entry? And you can save yourself some time by copying and pasting this in a total of 10 times. You're gonna run out of room here because there's only four. We'll just click the plus icon to add a new one and then just keep pasting. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. If you do one too many, that's okay. And now we just need to uh, change this uh, to the different items that are available. But before I do that, I'm gonna change this drop down here from all conditions being true to any of the conditions being true. 
because we're just going to say, hey, if it's any one of these, then you're going to perform the following action. Otherwise, we're going to do something else down here. So let's quickly change these to the other variables that are available. So notepad2, notepad3, Okay, so if the current entry that we're clicking on is already in our list of notepad items, basically we want to show that that rejected icon that suggests that, hey, you've already got this in there. And then we want to very quickly return it back to the normal state. We are working with this particular icon right here. So this is notepad icon 28. So first thing I'm going to do is change the state of notepad icon 28 to duplicate entry. I'm going to delay next action by half a second, 0.5 seconds. And then we'll change that icon back to its normal state. Okay. So if I've already entered something into my list of items, basically I'm going to get that uh, duplicate entry or rejected state um, version of this particular icon. Now, if it's already, if it's not in the list, we're going to do a different set of actions. So in other words, this is if uh, all of this is, or any of these conditions are true. If it's not in any of them, we're going to do the following actions here. And it's similar. First of all, we're going to change the state of notepad icon to accepted, delay next action by the literal value of 0.5 seconds. We're going to change the state of our icon back to normal. And now we need to do a little bit of jumbling around with our variables. Uh, remember, we have 10 different variables. So I want to store the current entry in the last of those variables, but I don't want to just simply overwrite what might be there already. So we need to store what's, it, what's currently in notepad item 10, now in notepad item 9. And then 9 will get stored in 8, 8 will get stored in 7, and so on, until essentially notepad item 1 will get the contents of notepad item two and what was previously in notepad item one will simply drop off the list because we're setting that maximum at 10. So we need to assign starting with notepad zero one, the contents of notepad zero two. Like before, we can save ourselves some time by copying this and pasting in here and we'll just change this to notepad 02 and we will store what previously was in notepad 03 and we'll repeat this until we get to 10 there. Okay, so now we're, we're just going to add the entry for notepad 10. And actually what we're going to put in notepad 10 is not one of the other notepads, but are the contents of our current entry. So the current entry will always get stored in notepad 10. But before we do that, we'll shuffle all the previous uh, stored entries into one of the previous notepad items there. So we can now save this as an action. And I recommend that you save an advanced action like this as the original advanced action, even if the intention is to use this with a shared action, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now this exists as a, an advanced action, and I can refer back to it if I need to. But let's go ahead and save this as a shared action. The name is fine. But there are a couple of things that we're going to need to uh, change. So Adobe Captivate does a really good job of guessing what parameters you need to store as part of a shared action. I like to think of a shared action as kind of a fill-in-the-blank advanced action, because really what we're storing or saving 
is the structure of the advanced action. And later, when we use the shared action over and over again, we're applying it to different objects and variables. So all of this is fine. We don't need to store or make changes to these. These variables are fine. Here is the current entry. That's going to change every time we use this shared action. So we need to include that as a fill in the blank for our shared action. And I'm literally just gonna call it the current entry. This is mostly for you, what you fill in here. Uh, the icon in question, the icon being used. And we can say the, the uh, duplicate state of that icon. Might as well put the capital D on that. The 0.5, again, that's not going to change from version to version. So we'll just leave it filled in. And then we'll also put in the normal state of that icon and the accepted state of that icon. Okay, so we've, we've pre-populated or given parameter names to all of our blanks for our shared action. So I can go ahead and save this, click OK, and we can close this now. Now with our uh, notepad icon underscore 28 selected, we can change its actions to execute shared action. And there's our shared action selected. Click on the action parameters icon, and we just simply need to fill in the blanks. So let's just put in some temporary text here. I'll replace this with the entry that's beside the icon in a moment. The icon being used is notepad icon 28. The duplicated state of that icon or duplicate entry is there. The normal state and the accepted state, real simple. So basically I've applied that much more complex advanced action using this simplified shared action here. So let's save that. And actually let's go ahead and put that text in place here. So I'm gonna go into the text uh, item that's beside it here, select all of the text for that stuff there. I'm gonna press Control C on my keyboard, Command C if you're on a Mac, and we'll select our icon again and click on the action parameters icon and we'll just pop in that text that's right there and you can see when you hover over it you get that nice little uh, preview text preview or alt text uh, indicator that you can see see the whole thing and that looks perfect so let's go ahead and press save now this is where it becomes very easy you saw how long it took to write that advanced action and then convert it to a shared action this is the coolest thing about shared actions I can select this icon, hold down my control key and drag this icon to the next entry and I have an exact duplicate there. If I go in and select the text for this entry, we go back to the icon and click on the action parameters icon. Because it made a copy of that icon, which includes the duplicate, normal and accepted states of that icon, the only thing I need to change is the text up here. So I'm going to go ahead and select all that text, press Control V or Command V uh, to paste that in. And now I've set up another shared action. And I can repeat that process very quickly for all the other entries. And of course, I could do this throughout a much longer e-learning course. This is just a very small example here. So I'll just populate in real quickly all the elements that are on this page here. Press enter before you press save. And again, we'll, we'll make a duplicate of the item here by holding down the control key and dragging the item to a new position. We'll select our action parameters icon to populate that current entry text. And we'll repeat that one more time for this slide here. Action parameter icon. Now, um, you may be wondering to yourself, how much text can I put in this current entry? I've tested this up to 255 characters and it seems to be working fine for that amount. It may in fact allow for more. 
Um, but I think you just want little short little snippets from your e-learning course anyway. Let's go ahead and save this final shared action here. And we'll just make sure my alignment is okay on all of these. I can open up my alignment toolbar and just use this, uh, this item here to align them all to one another. I think they were pretty good anyway. So the next thing that we need to do, and this is something you might want to consider putting on your first slide and displaying for the rest of the project, or perhaps on your master slide so that this icon appears on every single page in your course. And then sometime later, you're going to have uh, a slide that will, will display this information. But let's first of all deal with the action that we're going to need here. Now, in this case here, I'm going to write another advanced action that takes care of jumping from whatever slide I'm on to my special page where, you know, this uh, clipboard is displayed to our learner. So let's go ahead into the project dropdown menu and select advanced action. And we'll call this advanced action jump to notepad. And we're going to do two things here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to execute some JavaScript because what we need to do is we need to store the contents of that variable, uh, of all the variables in question into variables in JavaScript using local storage uh, so that we can recall it in an HTML window. And for those of you that are members of my YouTube channel, you'll be, of course, able to download this project file and reverse engineer everything I've done. But, uh, you know, I'll allow you to copy this. I'll put this in the description of the video. Hopefully it, it shows through there. But uh, essentially what we're doing is we're putting in a little bit of JavaScript here. And let me throw that into Notepad for a second so you can see it much more clearly what we're working with here. And I'll just describe what's happening. So we have a total of 12 different variables. The first variable is that shortlist title. That's the name of our Notepad. And a description right there. And of course, Notepad 0102 and so on right up to Notepad 10. We're using a little bit of JavaScript, window.cpapi interface. This is specifically the Adobe Captivate interface for JavaScript. And we are setting the item. We're calling it the exact same variable over in JavaScript in HTML, Notepad01. So we're storing the contents of the title, the description, and all 10 of those variables into variables that can be recalled in HTML. So you can screen capture this if it doesn't work with me pasting it into the description of this video. Uh, but like I said, if you're a, a downloads member of my YouTube channel, you'll be able to download this project file. So let's close that and we'll go ahead and click OK. And uh, we want to run this in the current window. And the last thing we need to do is jump to our notepad slide. In this case, it's slide number two, but it could be slide number 100, doesn't matter, uh, however long your course is there. So we're going to jump to slide number two here. We're going to save this as an action, click OK, and we're going to go ahead and click close. And we're going to change the on success action of our little clipboard icon to execute advanced actions. And we'll select jump to notepad because we're jumping to the notepad here. Now you might be asking, why didn't I save that as a shared action? I'm only going to be using this once with one icon, whereas all of these I'm using them over and over again. Potentially there could be hundreds of these little orange icons. So there's really no need to uh, make this into a shared action. So it's really, it's just the icon that will either be on the first page and displayed for the rest of the project or on your master slides. So how does this work? Well, we're going to go to this slide here and I'm going to display uh, an HTML document on this slide here. So let's just go to a folder where I happen to have that saved. 
So this eight, this notepad.html, I've made various versions of it over the last several months until I have something that I'm fairly happy with. I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Visual Studio Code so you can see the, uh, the text for it. Again, I'm going to do what I can to make this available to everyone. Um, really, all I've done here is um, set up a basic HTML uh, page. I've set up, uh, you know, sort of a body text here and two different heading texts, just using Helvetica, Arial, Sans Serif, and different colors for the different headings there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is use this little bit of code right here to display each of these variables that I've exported into HTML using JavaScript. So there's my underscore shortlist title. So that's going to come through. And then I'm going to do the shortlist description in the very next uh, set of, of scripts right here. I'm going to add a print button. And I thought that would be useful. Maybe we don't want to encourage people to print this out on paper, but we can certainly use the same printing uh, that's available on most PCs and Macs to allow you to save this document as a PDF, uh, which will include all the notepad items, as you can see here, notepad one, notepad two, notepad three, and so on, all the way up to notepad 10. Now there's a neat little trick that you can use in Adobe Captivate, and I'll just delete this item here for a moment. If I right click on notepad.html and use whatever program you use to zip things up, I'm going to add this to notepad.zip. This will create a zip of that HTML. Go back to my e-learning project, resize our window here so we can still see this. And I'm going to drag notepad.zip to this slide right here. There it is. I have this transparent shape that's already centered and sized accordingly. And then I can select that HTML document and just simply align and resize to the same size. So there it is there. You won't see any of the text yet, but you will see that print this page or save as a PDF button. Now we can do a few things here to make this kind of interesting. Um, if you go into your properties inspector, and instead of displaying it in the slide, which you can do, it's not an issue. I kind of like having it pop up in a new browser window. And then what you can do on exit of this slide, if you can keep the slide short enough, is have it go back to the slide that you left from there. So if we just set this slide up to display all of its objects for the rest of the slide and then shorten it down to half a second or so, we can just simply go to the slide last visited. So it won't even seem like you're jumping to a different slide at all. So now that we have our HTML here, we've got our shared actions and all our variables, let's test it out and see how it works. Okay, so here we are. Here are some great ways to improve your garden. Let's say I want to store the first item, the third item, and the fifth item to my list of great ideas that I'm going to store in my notepad. If I accidentally press one of the icons a second time or a third time, I get that little warning indicator to let me know that I've already added that to my list of key things that I want to remember on my clipboard or notepad or whatever you wish to call it. If I go ahead and press the jump to clipboard or jump to notepad, whatever you want to call it, you can see that it opens up in this new window, my course notes. And of course, at this point, I can print this page or save it as a PDF. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, Hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.